so that the product is finally ends up in the customer's place. And that's where the sales comes in. So the difference between the marketing and sales, if you have to ask, answer somebody, marketing is a strategy which creates a demand for the product or pull for the product, and sales strategy is nothing but a push, for, push strategy for the, for the products and services. Clear? Yeah. Right. It's a very simple understanding. Don't complicate things because life is much more complicated than whatever we talk about. <laughs> so keep things simple, right? <clears throat> okay. Now, the best part to quote it, you know. I, I would not like to spend much time on the marketing and chew up your hair for again. Okay? You know, each one of you, like I say, as a marketer or as a sales guy, each one of you are good. That's the reason you're here. That's the reason you are thinking of doing this particular course called MB, EMBA, and EMPTM and all the So you're, you're doing it because you are great. You are good. But there's a difference between good to great. You know, there's a thin line between good to great. Good is average. Because everybody is good. That's why they are in this art. That's why they have got a job. That's why they are responsible for certain roles. They're accountable for certain duties. They are managing something. That's why you are, you are good. But there is a difference from there's a difference and there's a journey from being good to great. So as a marketer or a sales guy, how do you become great? How do you take the journey from being good to great? This is not something called your know, magic, magical, but it's very commonplace. It's very commonplace which you need to you need to inculcate in yourself. Each one of us know about it. You know about it. You would know about it. It's very commonplace. But the point is that you need to imbibe, imbibe in yourself. You need to inculcate those things. You need to practice that. Like somebody said, you know, <laughs> control your thoughts because they become words. You know, words become your actions. Actions behave, become your behavior. Behavior becomes your habits. If you behave the same way 26 times, it becomes a habit. Somebody say that, right? <laughs> if you behave somewhere, you behave in a particular way, 26 times it becomes a habit. So if you behave, so control your habits because those habits will write your destiny. You work in a particular way, you'll continue working in that particular way, and that will, that will determine your destiny. So it's important for you to control your thoughts, your words, your behavior, or your habit. So what I'm saying here is that, look, you need to inculcate those thoughts inside you. You need to inculcate those words inside you. You need to imbibe on this so that they become your behavior. And those behavior becomes your habit. And those habits become your that, that practice. And those habits, if they are worse, if they are good, then you would determine your own destiny. Nobody writes your destiny. Destiny is written by you. Right? Everybody says that. Right? Everybody says that. It's normal. So, what I'm going to take it through here is that it takes a little bit more. Uh, can I ask somebody, what are those things which makes a difference from, from being good to great? Attitude. Attitude, Attitude. Attitude. very much. Dedication. Dedication. Come on, there's nothing called right answer or wrong answer. Okay. I, I'm not testing anyone. <laughs> so, so the question, you have to understand that. Whenever I ask a question, remember the question could be silly. The answers can never be silly. And if I have asked a question, there is an answer to it, definitely. Right? So don't, don't feel shy about it. Okay, last one. What did you say? Intelligence. Intelligence. Intelligence is slightly on a higher side, I would say common sense. <laughs> Right. If you don't have common sense, then there is a big problem. <laughs> right. So I would not uh, I put it up. Yeah. Right. Uh, a good sales guy or a good marketing guy. Whatever you have said just now, a few minutes back, is something called soft, <coughs> softer skills. They are soft. When I say softness, there are some things which you need to have on the back side of it. But if you are to become a good sales guy and a marketing guy, the first and the foremost thing that you need to do is to understand what the customer needs. If you don't understand what a customer needs, you might go and tell him, hey boss, you buy this, but he doesn't need this, he needs milk. You've got a big problem. You might say, this is a phone which has got uh, five megapixels with, uh, with uh, good connectivity and all, but he says, look guys, I don't need this, but I need a good signal. And if you go to a place like Agents in the corner of the room, I need to get good signal. 
and I don't need a 5 megapixel uh, program, right? Right? So then, but you are saying, look, I've got a great product, but you see it's a 5 megapixel. It might not send. Because you are not meeting his needs. The success of a seller or a marketer depends on how well he understands and translate what the customer wants. Look, customers are very vague most of the time. Customers don't articulate well. They are not able to articulate. It's a job of the marketer or the sales guy to translate whatever he has articulated in the way he can understand so that he can make an offering which matches his needs. So the most and the most promising of a good sales guy is to understand what the customer <laughs> needs. Next, you need to know your products well. You need to know what you're selling. If you don't know what you're selling, there's no way that you can go and convince somebody else. The first and foremost thing is you need to be convinced first of all. If you are not convinced what you are selling, how well would you go and convince a customer? You need to be convinced. Second, or maybe third, is that you need to know what competition is doing. Because you need to tell him that look, when I'm selling this, these are five different things which is matching up your needs and which are much better than what competition is offering. And whatever I'm offering, you have to articulate it as a benefit to the customer. You might say that this has got 5 megapixels, this has got a wireless antenna here, it has got Bluetooth, but the customer says, okay, so you translate it as a benefit. Bluetooth means, okay, the Bluetooth technology will help you to connect it with a laptop which has got Bluetooth features where you can transfer the data without putting a wire, right? You can say all that. So, most important thing is that you have to translate. Translate the offering into a benefit to the customer. And then you have to differentiate yourself from the competition. Right? You getting me? So, these things are known to everyone. These things are known to everyone. But the point is that we don't inculcate amongst ourselves. We don't imbibe. We think this is known to everyone, right? We don't. We think that it's, 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 it's commonplace for everyone. And we suddenly believe that okay, the customer. We assume that the customer knows everything. We assume that the customer is educated, but more often than so, that the customer is not. So most important, you understand the customer's need. Understand, articulate, translate whatever he has articulated vaguely, vaguely to you into something which you can offer to them. Then you talk about things like what your product is offering, right, and differentiate from the competition. <clears throat> and the important thing is that you need to be considerate of the customer's issues. Why would a customer or a consumer come to you? Because he has got certain issues, he has got certain problems which needs to be resolved, he has got something which needs to be addressed. So you need to be very careful in terms of understanding what are his issues. I use a particular word called trusted advisor. How well you can become a trusted advisor to the customer? How well and how fast can you become a trusted advisor to the customer? That's, that's something which you need, to, you need to know. Because that helps, that helps the customer to gain confidence, confidence on you. The more trusted you are, the more he would share with you. The more he would share, the more ideas you'll have in terms of what his issues are, what his needs are, and you can make an offering or a service which will match those needs and issues. So the aspiration levels become a customer, right? Now, the final point which, which develops the credibility of a seller or a marketer is to commit what you can deliver and then deliver what you have committed. Let me simplify that. Don't commit anything which you can't deliver. Don't overcommit. Don't tell a customer that I'll give you the moon when it doesn't require moon. Don't tell him things which you can't deliver. Don't say that the car that you're selling or a technology that you're selling or uh, telecom solutions that you're selling can do wonders for him when you know for sure it's not going to do wonders. But once you have said that you're going to deliver this, you very well deliver this. That will bring out the credibility in you. That will make a name of you. If you make a credible name for yourself in the customer's place, in the customer's name, in the customer's premises, then automatically you become a trusted advisor. He'll share with you. He'll share confidence. You have conferences, right?
So those are the things which makes a guy brain from good to great.